All right, guys, in the kitchen. Got the girl coming over, or the guy, if you guys are girls, or whatever your nature is. Um, you can prepare a meal for them, and what it's all about is, uh, yes, obviously food's about, you know, supplying the body with the nutrition you need to grow and be strong and everything else, but the dinner, the settings are very romantic, candlelight, the wine, the, the, the food is very, like, um, exotic in a way, it's very romantic, uh, almost aphrodisiac at ways. It's the preempt too, it's a foreplay of nature for the real mission at hand, let's be honest, later that evening after the dishes are washed, right? Um, then it's time to wash the sheets, hopefully in the morning. That's the mission at hand, right? So it's all, it's very loving and it's very uh, sexual and everything else. So I got a, a little special dish here, guys, that I've created for you. I've made a few times. And, um, and one time it kind of turns into like more of a soup. The other one turns into kind of a chicken-based pasta, uh, a paste form on top of a chicken. Uh, but it's all based off lentil. Um, we're gonna call it the lentil love luck. And uh, so let me explain why I love and luck. The love portion I kind of mentioned, because if you guys do this right, you probably get lucky with love, but where really the luck portion is in lentils. Lentils is this right here, guys. It's the ultimate rice, really. It's a filler, basically. Um, it's a... Uh, you know, you got 126 grams of protein in that one bag. Um, there's zero fat, and the only form of carbs are your your, your fiber-based carbs, which are your good carbs. The ones that cause is that slow release of energy, cause a lot of caloric burn to break them down. Um, so it's a really great substitute as opposed to rice or even brown rice. Lentils are something that I love because. Of, great source of protein. Uh, lentils, um, one of the oldest forms of food and cultivation of human nature. If you believe it, all the way back to the Bible, lentils are in there. Um, but uh, the luck part is this, in Eastern Europe, uh, every New Year's Eve, they always have a lentil soup to bring them luck for coinage in the next year, for prosperity. For some reason, it's all brought into it. So maybe, you know, if you guys cook this meal right, you know, with the right attitude and everything else, that luck is the love that you get after it, maybe. Maybe you don't need to wait till tomorrow or the next year, you can just do it that evening. So, we're gonna call this a lentil love luck, man. Um, so when I said I've made this a few times, you can make this into a soup, depending on how much liquid you put into the pot, or you can do a less liquid based on the chicken broth. And I'll go into all of our ingredients here, and then you can make it to a paste. So the chicken we have here, it can be a paste that goes on top of the chicken, or we can cut the chicken all up and put it into the pot and make more of a soup base. But what this is, is 100% protein, very low in fat, very low in carbs. What we have on the table here, I'll think the lentils. Lentils, huge in protein, uh, the good carbs, the fire-based carbs, helps to lower cholesterol, really good. Um, we've got uh, basically your tomato soup, that's gonna be in there dice. If you guys wanna go with a paste form over top of a full chicken breast, as opposed to a soup, we'll get rid of the liquid. Um, but, you know, tons of vitamins, minerals, chicken broth, low sodium chicken broth, um, just basically taste here. So, depending again, if we're gonna go soup version or if we're gonna go more the paste version, we're gonna use less of this. I'll explain all this later. Uh, balsamic vinaigrette, um, vitamins and minerals, very low calories. Um, we got our olive oil, great source of omega 3 fatty acids. That's just helped to start to cook up the seasonings and the taste of the veggies that are gonna go in there. And then we just got some garlic powder and salt that's gonna go in there too, just for flavor, really. Um, the onion. Um, Gone over this a million times, all the bang for the buck, the antioxidants that are in onions and the vitamins and minerals, as well as the celery, huge source of antioxidants and anti-inflammatories. Um, then we have our, uh, our parsley here. Um, parsley here is really good for a lot of things. Believe it or not, parsley helps to lower any kind of joint pain you guys have. Helps to also get rid of any kind of excess body fluid water you're holding or retaining. Parsley is also really good that it helps to, um, you know, help to increase the immune system. And it, and it really is an aid in your nervous, you know, order of the body too. So there's a lot of bang for the buck. We've got a whole thing here. We need about a, basically a cup of uh, parsley, we're gonna chop the celery up into pieces. So there's like a three step process here. The first step is to get the all the onions, the parsley, the celery, all that chopped up. We're gonna put some olive oil into a pan. Um, and uh, we're just gonna kinda get that started. This whole thing can be fast, um, 
but it's about 30 minutes in prep. So it's a cool meal if you got the uh, significant other coming over. So there's a nice little base in there of olive oil, right? Again, if you're making a soup or paste, you want to be careful on the liquid content we're going to put in there. Um, we'll turn the stove on right there. Um, start to warm this guy up. And what we're going to do basically it's just we're going to start cutting, slicing, and dicing all this stuff up. We'll get rid of the head on both of these and the top. We'll throw them away. What I love about celery, besides the uh, anti-inflammatory and antioxidants, it, it has a crunch factor. It's very low in calorie, so it gives it a lot of taste. There's a lot of vitamins and minerals um, in there, but it gives you that little bit of a crunch. So when you're cooking, like, especially a soup, you know, it, all the liquid kind of gets old after a while. But uh, when you do it with a little bit of celery, man, you really get like a, like a little bit of crunch crunch there, which is really nice. Um, so depending on how much you want to do, you can get that flat chop I have um, that hopefully you guys have by now because it's really beneficial um, and make it you know almost puree it if you want to. But you don't want to do it too much because you want to keep that crunch factor alive. So we went down lateral, go down you know longitudinal if you want. It's a little east-west action. Obviously, once this starts to soak with a chicken broth, um, we'll start to lose some of its crunch, but we'll still have that, uh, that, that volume in the crunch fat. Pick all that up, put it into the pan, let it start up there. That's our onion. Onion, we're gonna cut two ways, peel it off all the excess, kind of throw that away. Obviously, when your eyes water, it's the acetate. Um, the uh, enzymes in the onion, they're stable until you crack it. Nobody likes a big onion, so let's get the slap chop in it. Just kind of make it a little bit more puree stuff. So there's a lot of flavor coming in, guys. Um, it's already sauteing in there. Um, about 10 minutes of prep here on this stuff. I've been putting all this in, um, and that's where our flavor base is really going to come with this stuff. So dump this into the pan. All right, now last thing to go in there before everything else is our parsley. So basically all the stems here, we're just gonna cut the stems off real fast. We don't need them. We're gonna throw them away. And then everything else, we just cut and grind, man. Cut and grind. So we'll cut into kind of some smaller quadrants. Then we'll take our slap chop, make it even smaller, throw that in there. You can put this in at the very end, or if you want, you can put like a little bit of it um, hold it up to the very end and just kind of dress the top of it for, you know, decoration. Adds a lot of flavor too. So we're gonna grab a little bit of this. Just kind of leave it for later as a top dressing. The rest of this stuff, yeah, we'll grind it up a little bit more. Again, um, Really good to help reduce any kind of excess water that's in the body. Uh, really good for any kind of joint pain. Um, helps to rebuild the immune system as well as to aid the nervous system in the body, parsley does. Also great flavoring. Um, and then top dressing. So put that in there too. Now that we have everything in there, we'll just stir it around a little bit. So a lot of bang for the buck right here. Zero calories, basically, um, very low. Uh, zero carbs, a lot of vitamins and minerals, um, and then tons and tons of great flavoring, man. And then the oil in there, the omega-3 fatty acids, everything there's a win so far. Everything in there is helping the body grow. You guys aren't here, but you know, if your significant other's coming over or something, or you're having a date, 
you know, the room is starting to have that aroma, man. So, um, a lot of bang for the buck so far in a very early portion of the cookbook session here. The lentil love. Okay, as far as lentils, first thing you want to do is you want to wash them a little bit. So grab a strainer. Again, we got about 130, 120 grams of protein in this 16 ounce bag here. Um, and, it's, and, and the only carbs are just the good carbs, high fiber carbs. Once we start to water this, these are going to start to expand. So it's a great filler food too. So we're just going to sit here and just kind of like, I don't know, just wash off any kind of the ambient dust and crap that's in there. And then these are going right into our pot. Pot's going to be cooking for about you know 20 or so minutes, 30 minutes. You get to feel it out. Um, I'll show you as we go on how that works uh, as we cook the chicken. So that's all washed off. Make sure you get all the excess water out, especially if you're going to go for the, uh, the non-soup version. Okay, these go in there. Then what we're going to do is like this is uh, the chicken broth, 33% uh, less sodium, so it's a low sodium chicken broth, basically a lot of flavoring. Play with this, guys, depending on how much volume you're putting in there. This is where it turns into either soup or paste for your chicken meat. If it turns too soupy, then this chicken here is going to be sliced and diced into a lot of different pieces and thrown into the pie and we're making a, you know, like a soup. If we can keep it, which I want to do this, this, this iteration, is to make it more of like a, a sauce. Then I want to cook these chicken breasts in whole and make uh, you know chicken strips and then delicately pour this over top of the chicken and then put the parsley on top. It looks really nice and it goes down really well. Your body loves it. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to put, these are four cups in this guy. So I'm just going to feel it out and probably put a, a cup in there. But, you know, maybe right about the there right now. The next thing we're going to do you stir that up real fast. Where does it go? Just stir it around. Alright, next thing we're gonna do is we'll take our tomato soup. Um, straight up, one can, hunts, diced. Not the parade style, but the dice, we'll get those chunks. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna open it up and then we're gonna drain the liquid out. We don't want any excess liquid here. Alright. Still got a little bit in there, but that should work. A lot of great flavoring too. Uh, you can see it's getting it, you know. It's still got a lot of liquid in there, but obviously as it starts to cook, it's gonna dissolve a lot more. This is gonna be our, uh, our top dressing for our chicken, if we can do right. If we can't do it right, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put some more chicken broth in there, put the chicken in here, it's gonna be a big kind of like a, eh, kind of a, a, a stew in a way. But it's about a 20 minute cook here, guys, so. Prepare, so that's why we prep this first, and then we're gonna go to our chicken. Chicken, what we're gonna do, take each piece. We're gonna grab another pan. Very light bit of olive oil. Put a little bit of olive oil on each one of these guys. Kind of massage the olive oil around. I'm gonna put a little dressing on there. What do you think the dressing is gonna be? The one and only lemon pepper. Put a nice coat on there. Move it around, flip them over. Let's go into a pan. Let's 
Alright. So, let that cook up. Um, as it's cooking, we'll watch them both. But basically, I mean, this is pretty fast, man. The prep time's been a few minutes. Um, hasn't taken much time so far. It's kind of a waiting game. Um, so, it's a good time to kind of talk to you, whoever's here or clean up the mess. Um, you know, just enjoy the, uh, the aroma of the room. So, we'll clean this up real fast and we'll get ready. Um, as we're doing this, we can also, a little bit later, we're going to add our, our garlic salt powder and the balsamic vinaigrette. Um, pretty much done with everything else. We'll keep the uh, chicken broth on standby in the event we need that a little bit later. Um, but it's pretty chill, man, pretty chill. So what we're looking at here, guys, is like, the chicken alone, the four pieces of chicken breast right there. Uh, each chicken breast is about anywhere from 25 to 30 grams of protein. So we're anywhere from like 100 to about 120-ish grams of protein. Same with the, uh, the lentils, uh, that's the same kind of thing. So we're looking at about you know, 250 grams of protein in this, in this meal here. It probably serves about, you know, you can make it four or a nice portion for two. Um, and it's, it's quick prep, man, quick prep. You know, the carbs are your dietary fiber carbs, helps to lower cholesterol, give you sustained energy, and also the lentils help to also um, control blood sugar levels in the body. So there's a lot of bang for the buck with lentils. I think lentils is a new rice, really. You know, you guys have brown rice and white rice. That's just a filler, really. If you're gonna have a filler, why not have a filler with a little bit of, uh, of a punch, a little protein punch. So that's what the lentils are. So uh, I'll clean up real fast and then, uh, We'll see how these are, we'll keep watching them, and I'll be back with you in a second. See that water's already evaporated there? So they have a nice taste. So, this can go on top or bottom of our chicken. And, um, by the time the chicken's done, you know, it could be really fast, man. So, uh, 20 minutes, I think, maybe 25, in and out this entire ordeal. And cleanup's done too, so. Now, if you guys want to make this a soup, um, you're going to add basically the entire thing of chicken broth and then the entire volume again in water. And then it'll be a nice, tasty soup. Cut the chicken up into pieces, dump the chicken in there too, stir it around. Um, very nice option as well. Wait a couple of minutes. And um, we're putting on the chicken really. And let it go. Alright. Chicken's getting there. Okay, grease makes you jump, man. Alright, check it out. Now I'm gonna add a little balsamic vinaigrette and uh, a garlic powder, so I'm just gonna do like a little dusting basically of the stomach vinaigrette. Um, so I can open this fucking thing. Bit of uh, garlic powder, and a little bit of garlic salt. It's all taste preference, so however much you guys feel you want. Start slow, see how it goes. Um, I love to use the garlic and uh, since the chicken's still going, it's about ready. Um, 
we always want to make sure that, I mean, obviously we're burning the liquid out because we're going as a paste. So, um, wet seals really grow best, uh, I mean, cook best when it's in a, in a base of water. That's really what they're meant to do when they expand and everything else. Um, so we're trying to prevent the soup portion, so we're doing as, as little bit of liquid as possible if you're going for this pasty style. Um, but you need some liquid in there. So right now, the salt and vinaigrette added a little bit. Um, it's sucking all that up now because it's getting more than poured than burned off. Um, so all that flavoring of the salt and vinaigrette is being sucked into it. So that's where you really get to hold in, in my mind, uh, the most flavor of the balsamic vinaigrette. But um, if you find out that it starts to like be just thick into the pan, uh, you, you gotta add a little bit more, um, turn this guy down, you gotta add a little bit more chicken broth, otherwise you, you'll, you end up burning it. So this is looking pretty good right now. Uh, I think we're almost about there. The chicken looks about done, so turn this guy off. All right. Leave that guy on there a little bit longer. Get done with these. Pull these guys off. A little Christmas present for my parents, GPG. My initials, enjoy the gravy, but yeah. First time to see a scene in cookbook fashion. <laughs> We'd like to know so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna cut each piece into strips here, and um, and then we'll lay like like basically chicken strips, and then we'll lay all the um, the stuff on the bottom. Put this on top would be really nice, and a little bit of parsley. So. That's so what we can just kind of come like long strips. What I like to do, guys, when I'm cooking chicken, um, it's like, you know, chicken is something that uh, we've all had, right? And sometimes we have that really moist chicken, and sometimes we have that like really dry chicken. Um, and, and you know what I'm talking about. Same with steaks. What I like to do and every time I cook something on the grill or here and with a little bit of olive oil, I like to go high heat on it, right? And so the high heat, kind of what it does, it kind of seals off the bottom when you're cooking it and kind of like fries it in a second. You flip it over and it kind of you know burns the bottom a little bit. And what it does is it locks in the juices because when both sides are kind of like um, sealed in a way because of being you know burnt a little bit, it locks in the juices, but it also allows like a, a you know a little crunch factor with your seasoning and stuff. So there's a lot of crunch on the outside of the inside piece. If we look, it's still really nice and moist in there. You see all the juices, but the outside has this like little bit of a texture, a little bit of burn, a little bit of crunch. There's a lot of flavor in there. So that's that, that's how I like to cook it. Um, there's nothing worse than a piece of chicken um, that's just been you know just just cooked to shit, and you're like. You know, your jaw's getting sore trying to chew the thing, and you know, you're getting a workout. That won't get you the, the you know, the lentil love later, I'm, I promise you that. Speaking of lentils, I think we're about done here too. You guys can't smell this, but the balsamic on this thing is killer. Well, depending on how you guys want to do it, if you guys are going to do a soup version, it's almost twice as long too, um, unfortunately. So you're gonna have the chicken broth, it's gonna be to a boil, once it's at a boil, then you're gonna bring it down, the heat so it's to a non-boil, and then you're just gonna continue to stir for like 25 minutes. It takes a lot longer. Um, this is a lot faster, easier to prep. Um, same bang for the buck nutrition, went for me. All right, I'm done here, so let's turn this guy off. Prepare some plates. Spoonful of this, lay it on your plate. 
Yeah. Just like that. Hook up your companion with the same kind of length you love. Ooh. The house is smelling good right now. All right, got more there. Got a little bit left here. We need a little uh, second helping. And then we take the chicken breast. And we just kind of like lay that over top. So let's put this up here and just kind of lay the chicken breast over top like this. Kind of open it up. Give it a little window like that. Uh -huh. Feel me there? Feel me? Put this motherfucker up here too. Yeah. Have them all military terms. Dress right dress, best you can. A little bit more right there. Huh, huh, feel that? A little bed of lentil. With a little chicken on top. Uh -huh. How about that? Now what we do is we do a little sprinkle. Do a little sprinkle action. We'll take our parsley here, you know? And just do a little bit of dusty on top. A little dust and flavor. Yeah, get all like poetic with this shit. Put the soft music on. Grab a little bit of a bottle of wine or something. Get ready for the luck of the lentil to come out to bring that love. Also put a little bit on the outside here, I bet, you know? Shows a little love there too. Anyway, it's all about romanticizing the meat. Um, now always being the meathead, you know what I mean? I'm gonna clean this up and then I'll show you the final product. Feels so good. Let's see what we got here, man. You know, before the the guests come over, let's make sure we're we're ready for that, uh, that lentil love luck, man. Mm. No. The chicken, the lentil, the crunch back with the celery, the protein absorption, the balsamic at the end. It's just awesome. I can't eat too much because that looks like, you know, somebody was rat fucking with the food and when the person comes over, so I want to make it like I'm waiting for her. So, the lentils, guys. Um, it's all preference. So, I like them kind of like hard and stuff, so I don't use a lot of water. If you guys like them softer, then you're going to have a longer cooking time and more water. I'll explain what that is real fast. Um, but what I like to do is I like that crunch factor and the chicken, the crunch, the celery. If you guys like it softer, what you want to do, and you guys can make a soup out of this if you really want to, or you can make it like I did. Um, you're just going to be draining all the water out afterwards. But basically what you do is you eat the same exact prep, but when I put that chicken broth in, and I put like two cups, like kind of a half package of that, um, you want to put the entire uh, chicken broth in there, right? And then you want to fill that same thing up with water. Fill it so almost like it's it, it's like submerged in a pool of water. The lentils are with all the you know the onion, the celery, and the parsley and everything else. All that's in there. Um, bring it to a boil. Let it boil pretty good, and then turn it down, simmer it down a little bit, and just keep stirring. It. It's about 25, maybe 30 minutes. You're going to be doing that until basically the water is starting to subside and it starts to be evaporated or basically pushed into the lentils. That's going to make it a little bit bigger and a little bit softer and more of like a, a mush factor as opposed to a, a, a kind of a crunch factor. And it's all preference on how you guys want to do it. At that point, if you guys want to make it a soup, um, you want to continue to put some chicken broth in there and then you can put the chicken cut in pieces and put it in there. If you don't want to make a soup and you want to make it like what we did here, then you would take that with, it still has a lot of volume in there of water and you can use a strainer and just pour out all the liquid. You know, just really get it all out. Um, and then place it here it's not going to be as you know form fitting as this, um, and it won't be as hard. The lentils won't be as as more of a crunch, um, kind of like a you know gummy bearish kind of thing. That'd be really like you just push your your tongue to it with your mouth, and you know, it'll just smash in half. But anyway, the guest is coming over. 
It's a great meal, guys. Um, tons of protein. The chicken alone, um, about you know, 120 grams of protein. The lentils, about 120, 130. We're looking like at these two plates, 250 grams of protein, guys. Um, tons of vitamins and minerals with the celery and the onion and the uh, parsley. A lot of great bang for the buck here, guys. Great taste with balsamic vinaigrette. The only carbs are those good fiber carbs, you know, that slow release energy helps to maintain body sugar, um, helps to burn a lot of caloric intake. You know, it takes a lot of calories to burn those good carbs because it's fiber based. So it'll fill you up without. Um, filling your gut out kind of thing. Um, so this is a win-win, guys. Enjoy. All right, all right, almost game time, guys. Almost game time. Um, so it's, 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 uh, it's about the love of the meal, guys, how you prepare it. It's good for the body. But then go a step further, you know, step a little ambiance, you know. It, it goes a long way. I mean, when someone puts, like, time into something, um, shows they care. It's it's well reciprocated and it's it's easily seen, and um, you know going out and buying something sure. Uh, when you when you got a I got to do a wedding gift video. When you go out and buy a gift for somebody at a wedding, sure that's great, man. They appreciate. It. When you go out and you kind of like, you know you create something I love, um, you know it goes a lot further. So same kind of thing with setting up a meal, the ambiance and stuff. Um, you know see if the lentil luck works for you tonight. Um, as far as who's coming over, well, we're gonna cut that, man. But uh, definitely one that goes on the menu, man. The lentil love luck. Give it a shot, you'll love it. Don't spill over the fucking table. Fuck. Now I gotta clean it up. All right, I'm out. Hey.